Hi, this is Alana from the QuickBooks team. If you use Square to process your sales, you can save time by automatically downloading your sales and other transactions into QuickBooks. Let's go over how to record new transactions downloaded from the Square Connector by QuickBooks app and how to match them to transactions already in QuickBooks. To get started, you must connect your account to QuickBooks. Watch this video to learn how to do that. Before you add any transactions from Square, let's take a look at two important accounts QuickBooks uses to track and record Square transactions. Select the Settings menu and Chart of Accounts. When you set up the Square app, you selected which bank account Square deposits your money into. This is usually your checking or operating bank account. However, Square doesn't deposit each sale right away. Instead, you receive a payout from Square each day or when you choose to make the transfer. That means you need an account to track where Square holds the money before they send you the final deposit that could include sales, refunds, and fees from an entire day's worth of transactions. In QuickBooks, your undeposited funds account, which could also say payments to deposit, is where Square stores your funds before you receive the deposit to your bank. So now, let's add your first sale. Select Transactions, App Transactions. Transactions listed under the For Review tab await your approval and don't appear on your reports or financial statements until you confirm them. Select a row to see additional details about a transaction. Let's look at a sale. Square shows sales as payment receive transactions. This records when you collected money through Square from a customer in exchange for goods or services. First, you confirm who the transaction was with. If QuickBooks recognizes the customer, it automatically fills in their name. You can also add a new customer or use Square Connector defaults. Then you see an overview of the transaction, including taxes and fees. You'll see a list of all the products and services you sold. QuickBooks tries to match what Square shows you sold to products and services in QuickBooks. When you or QuickBooks selects a product or service, the income category that the item uses increases by the amount of the sale. If QuickBooks can't find an exact match, you'll see a list of possible matches. Select the correct item from the list or create a new product or service. If you want to split the total of a sale between multiple categories, select different products and services for each line item. Because each product and service has an income account assignment, if you select multiple products and services, you'll affect the income categories for each product and service you choose. Check out this link to learn more about products and services in payment apps. After you've reviewed the details, select Confirm. After you confirm the sale, QuickBooks learns from your selections and assigns the same product or service to other transactions with the same item. You find Confirm Transactions in the Categorize tab. They stay here unless you undo them, which moves them back to the For Review tab. You may receive transactions from Square that are already in QuickBooks. In that case, match the transaction with one already in QuickBooks, which helps prevent duplicates. You'll see the matches QuickBooks found and a link to what QuickBooks suggests matching it to. Once everything looks right, select Confirm. Now that you've added a few sales, go back to the chart of accounts. Notice your bank account balance is still $0 because you haven't received the money from Square yet. However, your undeposited funds or payments to deposit account balance shows where the sales will sit until you receive the payout from Square. When you receive money from Square to your bank account, QuickBooks records a deposit. Let's review a payout transaction now. This transaction will group received payments fees, and refunds that represent the net payout you receive from Square. Make sure you assign the right bank account and that it's linked to the correct transactions and confirm it. Back on the chart of accounts, 
you see that undeposited funds, or payments to deposit, is $0, and your bank balance shows the money square deposited. If you've connected the bank account involved in the transaction, you'll also see it as a match in the bank transactions window to prevent duplicates. If you ever need to change how the Square Connector app works with QuickBooks, select Square Settings. You can see all the default settings that the Square Connector uses for line items, customers, or vendors. Select Store Locations. This is where you assign accounts the app uses on transactions. Select a deposit account for each location. And the cash account is where you track how much cash you have on hand for each location. You can change any of these accounts from this window. Select Save. Select Advanced. The Square Connector app automatically creates and uses items to track tips, sales tax, disputes, refunds, and other types of transactions you receive from Square. These items handle the complex accounting for you and let you run clear reports. Just like the sales items, advanced items have an assigned account to record sales tax you still owe to the government, tips you still owe to employees, disputes you're waiting on a resolution for, and more. You see the expense account Square uses to categorize the fees you pay processing sales, the item that tracks sales tax you've collected from customers you processed using Square, and more. Now you're ready to use the Square Connector app in QuickBooks.